Okay, this is Robert of MayflowerBookshop.com, Mayflower Bookshop in Berkeley, Michigan, on the web at MayflowerBookshop.com. I want to talk about astrology more, September, October 2021, and uh, and beyond. And let's just talk about where the planets are. I mean, just for a minute on the sun signs. There's a Saturn square Uranus all through 2021 that the third Saturn square Uranus happens December 24th, Christmas Eve. And I want to just mention Chiron. Chiron, whether it's kind of a hypothetical planetoid or planet, or it is, it's it's a planetoid or something, that's between Saturn and Uranus. Dane... Ruger, one of my astrology mentors, thought that planets to be planets had to have a fire at the center. Does Chiron have that? Not sure. But nonetheless, Chiron's a big thing. It's, it's, it's referred to as the wounded healer. And I, I've noticed that a lot of people, a friend of mine, Ray Merriman, good astrologer, he, he mentioned that he's giving more importance to Chiron and that a lot of other people are too. And it led me to think, why is that? Like, I've noticed that over the years, there's, depending on what all the planets are doing and what's going on on Earth and the stars and where all the planets are, like, for instance, Saturn square Uranus, the tension between security and freedom, or finding the appropriate forms for my new self, or being, or trying to hang on to some old self, and fighting the changes. I mean, that's the Saturn square Uranus is the is the the destructuring and restructuring. And that that's the Saturn Uranus, that the positive or negative tensions that arise from this destructuring and restructuring of friendships and goals and work and world. Saturn being the ruler of Capricorn and Uranus being the ruler of Aquarius. Innovation and change and novelty and freedom from or to. Saturn can often be rootedness, but it can be obstacles. So Chiron is between Saturn and Uranus. And I can't help but wonder if more people are interested in it because it's like some kind of connection between security and freedom of Saturn and Uranus. Chiron has been in Aries, and it's known as the wounded healer. It's like when you get on top of Chiron, you have this ability to transform your negative side or your hurts or your wound. The wound becomes a psychic renewal and tool for healing others. The wounded healer is somebody who carries their wound but allows them to have compassion for others. I mean, when we hurt ourselves, we can start to see how other people hurt. And and then maybe we'll arouse compassion, you know. Compassion is, like, love is when you want somebody to be happy. When you love somebody, you, you wish they, were, they could be happy. And, and that love can take several different levels, you know, higher to lower. But when you love somebody, you, you wish they were happy. You want to do something to make them happy. Or you love someone because they make you happy, which can be troublesome in itself if you're not considering the other person being happy. So, so love right away gives you the sense of the other rather than just the self. Love is, gives you a sense of the other. And freedom from the self is a big step in learning, in transcendence, in self-realization by knowing there is no self. That <laughs> Tibetan Buddhism way of looking at it, zen way. There is no God unless you prove it by the way you live. And there is no self unless you prove it by the way you live. There is no love unless you prove it by the way you live. So Chiron is in Aries, and so Aries are trying to heal themselves or others in some kind of big way. And they got that their wound is is holding them up. And I think that 
when you look at the squares in opposition, Libra, Capricorn, Cancer, all share in this wanting to heal or be healed or heal and be healed. An awareness of the of the wound. In the better part of Jungian psychology, the wound needs to become the womb of a renewal, of a second birth. Steiner kind of thinks, indicates that the wound, surviving the wound, is to birth a new psychic sense, a new sense of things. Wherever the wound is, it develops a, a intuitive psychic sense of things, not, not only just for protection, but for moving forward. <clears throat> and and you could say that Sagittarius and Leo, which trine the Chiron and Aries, may have an easier time. Those planets who have the ascending sign moon. In my astrology book, I point out that the sun, moon, ascending sign are the most important in trying to evaluate your triple sense of self. And then maybe... Venus, Mars, Midheaven. Of the sense of self. And that Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus, sometimes Saturn, when Pluto, Neptune, and Uranus aspect very strongly by conjunction, opposition, or square, your natal sun, moon, ascending sign, and secondarily your Venus, midheaven, Venus, Mars, midheaven, Mars, Venus, midheaven, depending on, this, on these planets' relative position with other planets, are critically important. The most important aspects by NATO and transit is the Pluto, Neptune, Uranus, sometimes Saturn, very rarely, but sometimes Jupiter, conjunct opposing or squaring your Sun, Moon, ascending sign, and secondarily, Mars, Venus, Midheaven. That these are critically important things. In fact, <clears throat> I could also say that any planets that hang out within 15 or 20 degrees of your ascending sign are critically important. Secondarily, the midheaven, nadir, and seventh house cusp called the descendant. So the ascending sign is the most important for planets to be hanging out or and then secondarily strongly aspecting by you know square opposition. Secondarily, it's the descendant um, or midheaven nadir bottom. And that's a whole nother teaching wrap that I go into a little bit in my book, Astrology, Astrological Aspects, the Art. And, <clears throat> but now, looking at September, October, I want to mention that, you know, you, some of these planetary movements, I mean, when you have Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius, you have a sense Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, and Taurus are really trying to find happiness and longevity. A feeling that something's growing and renewing as well as something's deeper rooting. The Saturn square Uranus makes for these fixed signs of Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, and Scorpio. I mean, the fixed signs mean they'd like to have things keep lasting and not change real fast. And Uranus, Saturn is, hurry up and be pa Hurry up, hurry up and be patient. Will you please be patient and sit down? Hurry up, get it now. That's that, that attitude of Uranus, you know, getting in on it. And, um, <clears throat> and then you have like Pisces. Neptune is in Pisces. And so Scorpio and Cancer have a side of this trine of Neptune. Scorpio and Cancer also have... Can't we just like take a break and mellow out and get high or escape or sleep or garden or just hug, let disappear, melt? And, and Pisces 
wherever you have Pisces is a little bit of an escape for better or worse, either either one's weak and sick or ill um, with, with something's making you feel psychically or emotionally ill or physically ill. And, and yet the Neptune, you know, Neptune is strongly affecting the opposition of, of Virgo, you're right. Uh, and, and the sun going through Virgo uh, doesn't help the situation. So when Neptune is opposing the sun, in in mid September, whatever, and it's in other words, Neptune's in Pisces. It's been there for a while. It's been opposing Virgo and squaring Sag in Gemini, and so these mutable signs get, get when you're inspired, you just can go on forever, and then all, and all of a sudden you can't sleep, and you're wired, and or you're going numb or escaping or you're melting down. I mean, Neptune wants to unite you with a higher purpose, or it will melt you. It's the universal solvent in alchemy. Whereas Saturn, rightly understood, Saturn and maybe even Pluto, when rightly understood, can be the philosopher's stone. Neptune is where you get stoned. <clears throat> you get too high and then you turn to stone. If you get too high, you have to crash and fall and be real quiet and sleep and restore and rest. And Neptune's either escapism or a meltdown. And Neptune, the danger of Sagittarius, Gemini, Pisces, and Virgo is to f um, feverish pursuits of false, illusory, delusional, never quite self-realized. It's the unfinished artist. It's the never-ending story. I mean, there's a positive and negative side to everything, right? And so when you have Venus in in Scorpio, uh, September October, going into Sagittarius. You know you have this whole, this whole ideal to be rid of attachment and what pricks you and pinches you and everything that pinches you and disturbs you and irritates you and me makes you feel stuck and that you get overwhelmed with trying to figure out some little thing and details that don't seem relevant to your bigger spirit soul. You know Venus going into Sag wants to reach out to higher learning. You know, as we go into October, there's a side that really wants to get rid of things that aren't higher learning and a higher love and and spiritual, you know, rather than Scorpio tends to like be taking things personally and and either is vindictive and wants to get even or um, wants to equalize themselves with all the world. Scorpio is is the scorpion, but it can also be the this they can be the snake in scorpion. It can be the wisdom of the serpent. Be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, Jesus says. But Scorpio can also be the ego that has the higher attainment, not the egotism that takes things personally, but the ego that flies in the air, the symbol of the, the animal for America, the high-flying ego of of attainment, uh, or of uh, of greater realization and vision that includes us all and, and the past and the future being in the eternal now. That one lives in the eternal now, but includes the past and future of where we're going, and so the the immutable signs, um, and and you can see that some signs are being influenced by a number of planets, and where exactly your planet is, because like if you're if you're like zero to nineteen Pisces, twenty Pisces, you've already been through a lot of what I'm describing. But if you're like the last third, if you have planets or a sun sign in the last third of Pisces, the last third of Virgo and Sag and Gemini, that's why you need your chart to look at it while I'm talking, to see what other planets are there, you're right? Sun, moon, ascending sign especially, then Venus, Mars, right, Midheaven. And <clears throat> those outer planets, uh, when you look at it natally, they move real slow, and that, that's connected to your whole age group. But when you get those outer planets now, aspecting your personal planets, you're going to be taking it personally, what's going on. You're going through deep metamorphosis, change, Uranus, Neptunian meltdown, or uniting with a higher purpose, social, cultural, artistic purpose, spiritual purpose. And Pluto is is like committed to death, you know, or is it like a, a self-renewal and a selfless, compassion for all the suffering and how can I position myself to be of help, you know, and that the home and the money are only useful 
uh, if, it, if it can serve me to serve a higher self and others. Yeah, something like that. And that's why you, one would want to read Key to Theosophy by Blavatsky or Outline of Esoteric or Occult Science by Steiner or the, or the Secret Teachings of All Ages by Rudolf Steiner or The Thinking and Destiny by Percival or the Urantia book, right? Or, or um, Vivekananda's yoga, yoga books or Krishna Murti. Um, there's so many good books. Okay, so what's going on with the uh, signs again with the planets? Let's go back to that. And let's look at... <clears throat> let's look at... Lilith conjuncting the North Node in September. <clears throat> and... Series being close by too. So if you're early Gemini, early Sag, early Pisces, Virgo, it's a more smooth ride if you're early Aquarius, uh, although Saturn's there, right? That's a different story we just went through. But early Aquarius, early Libra. Mars is in early Libra, trining the node in early Gemini and Lilith rough trine and series. So Libra, early Libra and Gemini are hot on new learning and doing and working with others and expressing themselves and making new connections and fixing everything, all these little things up, doing a thousand things, multitasking. And <clears throat> if you're Aries, early Aries or early Capricorn, You might be thrown a little bit by your own or other sensuality or connectivity. Um, you might be thrown a bit. How do you how do you connect? You know, I mean, how do you have a super sens sensitivity, a super sensuous with garden and art and music and the higher self of the other person, a sensuousness with the higher self of yourself and other others, and higher learning. I mean, it's a really great opportunity for the mutable signs to take on new learning. And uh, and otherwise, like the early Libra, Capricorn, early Aries, early Cancer, want to fight. Because, you know, Mars is going through Libra, and, and that is, you know, this temptation of trying to think that people are your enemy. It calls on one to remember the spiritual teachings of esoteric Christianity and the Holy Grail of Jesus the, the Christos, Jesus the Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Love your enemy. <clears throat> Jesus says, love your enemy. He never said you had to like them. Bruce Lee said the enemy is the friend, and that if you can take a few bouts with the enemy, you can learn their technique and use it, and use it renew it, bring it to a higher level. So Mars in Libra, Mars normally is with Aries and it doesn't really like Libra. And <clears throat> all through September, I mean at the at the as you get to October full moon, um Mars is going into Scorpio, but Mars is going through Libra. And so September, October is feeling that other people are attacking you or negative or or are other people trying to turn you on to new ways of growing and learning and being and going. And so Mars and Libra can be a good thing if we don't take it personally and we have the courage to objectively just see things for what they are. And that I, I, I think one of the problems that we're not one of the problems that I, I see going on is, is that um, is that a lot of people are very judgmental of others and critical of others, but that it's impotent to change anything. In other words, 
all of us have these critiques or judgments about situations, ourselves and others, that are impotent to do anything to make it better. And so a lot of people tend to look for people to support their critical negative critique or judgment on a situation in the world or other people. And that we think we've got it down. We think we know what's going on. We, we've got the best conspiracy critical theory, conspiracy theory or criticalness about a situation or person. <clears throat> and it's impotent and stops us from learning new ways that would bring about creative changes and positiveness, bringing us into the future. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm saying that our thinking logic and our you know emotions get involved to make it even more complicated that we take it personally that the president's doing that or so and so or my mother or my lover or my friend. We take it really, really personally rather than an opportunity to grow in some new way. And I think that that, that is something in our meditation, like the, on a spiritual level, is it's different than the materialistic world. The materialistic world, we can find fault in cause and effect, measure, number, and weight. But in the spiritual world, there is no victim. There is no fault other than our own, that we have this karma from many lifetimes or from our, in biblical terms, they call it the sins of the parents or something, you know. It's like, it's, it's the cause and effect or karma from previous life or from our parents, parents, mothers, mothers, parents, parents, fathers, father, and that somehow we've got the DNA to suffer something or to go through something, to learn something, and that all sufferings are the labor pain of a higher birth, that all the suffering and struggle that we go through is either due to bad karma from previous life or it's a learning opportunity to grow. It's like a boot camp of learning so that we can grow in new ways and we can get a better job of helping others in some new way. And, and so, so that then from the higher self point of view, we're the cause of everything so that we can learn and grow and know in a, in a more whole way. Other than the great oneness of the Father principle, um, when, when Jesus from the cross says, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. This is the idea that the Father is the oneness. But when we come into the, um, the Christos, it's a higher learning and a participatoriness yeah, aligned with that oneness. I and the Father are one. I and the oneness are one. And yet, um, like Dionysius or Orpheus or, uh, or the Christos, we could be torn to pieces in in the way that we're sharing with the whole world in different, all of us are kind of like connected to thousands of different people, hundreds of people, dozens of people. And we've already given ourselves to so many situations that there's pieces of this everywhere in the world. And all those pieces collectively form this great ideal that initially we strove for a grail that would hold us all, nourish us all, and heal us all. I think astrology being the logi of the astrology, the logic or the word of the astral plane, the, the higher golden word, the golden fleece, the holy grail of the astral plane, the astrologia, the wisdom of the astral, the spirit within that transforms the astral into the higher manas, the Buddha manas, the Bodhi mind, the conscious awareness of love and truth. That's the real astrology that the ancients had. <clears throat> and, and you remember that Dane Ruder was a theosophist. He told me he was even a co-mason. And he studied Tibetan Buddhism a lot and uh, had Tibetan lamas around him when he died. He was, a, he was attuned to Tibetan. But, you know, all of them were. Mark Edmund Jones, Alan Neal was a theosophist, Carter, 
all the early theosophists were spiritually minded and would try. It's not that they belonged to a society. It's that they they joined and learned different spiritual from different spiritual groups so that they could apply it to their client clients and to the world around them. Although Rudolf Steiner and Blavatsky and Manley Hall and Hermetics and Neoplatonism and Tibetan Buddhism and yoga, although although it has me a bit, I have it. I try to apply all those spiritual teachings in whatever way I can, poetry and art and, I, I, you know, the romance of knowledge, to apply it to your friends and and, and even to love your enemy and apply, help the world be a sane place where we're awe in league with the gods, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan, or whoever you cherish in the music of value in the musical artistic world and the spiritual worlds, that we have these ideals, not of, 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 of just sports figures and famous people. We have these ideals of, of striving to live the higher life, the higher life of virtue and truth and love that would overflow to the world around us, not only our backyard, but to the neighbors. And that is part of the goal here. And so when we look at the planets and where they are, we're looking at um, Pluto at the end of Capricorn. So this final learning lesson for the leaders of the world that, that whatever they were doing isn't working and it's destroying the earth. And, and this has to do with a total death and transformation of Capricorn and, and opposing that the way that people run the world, Capricorn, is opposing gardens and food and water. And that, that's the opposition in, of Pluto into Cancer. And in the future, Pluto is going to go into Aquarius and it's going to oppose Leo. It's going, is it going to destroy the sense of self or rebirth it? Is it going to be brotherhood or big brother? as it goes into Aquarius. And as it squares <clears throat> Taurus, does that mean total control of all possessions and money? And then unless you obey the big brother, you lose all your possessions and money? Or does it mean a renewal of every little thing matters to the whole? That's a real deeper sense of, of Pluto, that every little thing matters to the infrastructure that holds the whole. And, and that Aquarian value <clears throat> is really... Uh, connected to Jesus sitting by the well with Mary Magdalene and what went on there to transform uh, the all negatives to positive and that and that men and women work together the, the spiritual and material divine masculine and feminine work together and that women or the divine feminine wisdom has an equal right to worldly knowledge this is a deep deep uh, Aquarian age value and that it that squares Scorpio too and that desire has to be extinguished uh, either because we're in, under the influence of Big Brother, right? Or total totalitarian dictator control, uh, squaring, Pluto squaring Scorpio coming. Or is it that um, that little personal desires eventually find their way of being part of the artistry of the, of the whole of the world and the future destiny of the planet? And uh, so this is kind of a, a way of re-grasping uh, what's going on now, and what, and when we look at September and October, we're really looking at. Uh, I want to take a look at the new and full moons that take place. So I think I should probably wind this section up of the astrology and go to another uh, third astrological sharing of what's going to happen with the new and full moons as we go through September, October, into November, December, and the new year. Uh, what are we walking into? And again, uh, I'm seeing that October is a rough time for the president. So we want to pray for him, that for his health and for his sanity of right wisdom, knowledge, and practical doings and his ability to work trying to... But Mr. Biden, President Biden, is trying to work with everyone and make everyone happy. Can he make everyone happy? Is that possible? Is that what President Carter tried to do? Is it the uh, is it like a Trumpster, President Trump, ex President Trump? Um, is it this and previous presidents 
of of really making certain powerful people more powerful or happy and this thing that is perceived as the rich getting richer and less taxes like people who are really really rich who run the world don't pay any taxes or much tax you know i mean th these are complicated things and should money be here that doesn't represent work is it a moral ethical thing to make money on money is it a moral ethical thing not to protect the earth and the water and the air and the wee little people and the wee little things that we that that support the whole higher i mean these are complicated there's a lot of complicated philosophical and materialistic spiritual and materialistic debates that are going on for quite a while now and it so i'm trying to avoid um where we just get into op opposing each other and i'm trying to help you to see from the astrological point of view how all the planets and the signs have a higher and lower octave and that originally in my book i talk about this too but originally in some of these talks I talk about it, what's called the seven sacred planets. The six strings of the guitar, the six virtues of the Prajna Paramitas of Tibetan Buddhism, the sixth and the seventh being the Prajna wisdom that holds it all and selflessly can stand aside with the once removed vantage point of calm abiding space, equanimity, and a sense for it all. Uh, these are really noble ideas that came out of Neoplatonism and Hermetics and early Christianity and the Holy Grail and and the ideals of Chartres, Chartres Cathedral and uh, um, Aristotle, Plat Platonic virtues and values and the Neoplatonism, the Tibetan Buddhism, the, the, the planets were the sacred virtues like I talk about in the Voice of the Silence talks, they're the planetary conditions that the seven Earths that formulate the seven levels of consciousness. One of the problems we have relating to each other is that we're physical, emotional, mental, and a sense of self, and that sense of self is connected to everything and completely separate and alone with itself. Uh, and 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 there's some kind of sense of everything and nothing, a mind that can handle being involved with everything and, and being separate from everything. I don't, I don't know if you're getting me. And then the, then a sense of self that unites with universal mind and universal love, compassion, and universal truth rather than just personal. There's a physical, etheric, astral, and ego that's connected to desire and the lower manas and fear. And then there's a, a sense of self and mind that's connected to these higher universal understandings of truth and love and see that is the game of the higher and lower octave of the planets and there's a lot of ways to get to it so let's talk next about uh some of the aspects in september and october especially around the new and full moon and how that affects the signs of the zodiac and the planets we have there this robert of mayflowerbookshop.com bless your heart of learning Bless your heart of learning.